Welcome into the Cowboys Report. On today's video, we're taking a look at why it might make some sense for the Cowboys to trade down, what they might be able to get if they do, and most importantly, who they could take in round one. Now, the reality is for the Cowboys this year, picking number 10 overall, the value of the draft doesn't really line up great with the Cowboys team needs. You'd, you'd love to get a great defensive tackle or an elite safety. And there might be a cornerback there at number 10, but that's not a guarantee. The value comes at receiver, at quarterback, areas that unless the Cowboys do something funky this offseason, eh, it's not going to be their biggest need. So trading down and still getting a similarly graded player while also adding more draft capital does make some sense. Now, many have asked, have asked Tom, what could the Cowboys get if they move down? Well, it depends on how far they move. So I have two examples here for you guys of hypothetical potential trades the Cowboys could do. Here's the first one up. They move down to number 16 overall with the Arizona Cardinals. This pick nets you around a 2021 first round pick, number 16, of course, a third round pick and a fifth round pick. Very important note, that fifth rounder Arizona owns right now is currently number 143. Once the comp pick process is finalized, it's going to be more in the 170s because teams will get extra third and fourth rounders. But you trade down a handful of spots, you net an extra third rounder. And before you guys complain, oh, this isn't realistic. This is the Josh Rosen trade. It's the exact same thing, same spots. There's no change there. Another one that I think could make some sense is maybe the Bears want to come up and get a new quarterback. So they move up 10 spots, a 2021 second round pick, that's number 52 overall, and a future third rounder. Once again, this is identical to the Devin Bush trade from not that long ago. Maybe you could get a little bit more in terms of it's a quarterback, but a first, a second, and a future third to move down 10 spots. That's actually kind of intriguing, especially if there's someone you want at 10, but could also be there at number 20. So should the Cowboys trade down? Maybe there's a but unless someone you want is there. But let me know what you guys think. This question will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and type your votes. Y for yes or N for no. Now let's take a look at some of the potential players who could make sense. We have gone through top draft options at number 10 overall. I'll link that video for you guys in the comments section. But I want to focus more on players who you could trade down. Well, I don't love going number 10 overall, but if you move to 16 or something like that, it makes some more sense. We'll begin with Christian Barmore, the defensive tackle from Alabama. I think he's going to end up being the almost consensus number one interior defensive lineman in this year's class. He got some preseason round one buzz because he flashed late last year for Alabama, but he was slow to start this season, was battling a bit of a knee injury, and then down the stretch, he absolutely dominated. His, C or his college football playoff run, I think in reality, secured him a round one spot. Finished here with nine tackles for loss, eight sacks, had a 12% pressure rate, but he was inconsistent. Tennessee, he was a complete non-factor in that game. The breakout happened down the stretch. There is some inconsistency. There is some concern there, but if you trade down, acquire an extra asset, I'm fine with going Barmore somewhere in that teens, early 20 range. You need defensive tackle help. Uh, you have Neville Gallimore and Tristan Hill and Antoine Woods, and those are three of your rotation guys, I guess, but... Ugh, those guys aren't legitimate impact players. Barmore has the potential to end up being that guy. I am unconvinced he will end up being that elite breakout defensive tackle. But in the teens, the 20s, I think the range is about right on a pretty mediocre defensive tackle, at least at the top. Now, if you guys want a seven-round Cowboys mock draft, I want you guys to like today's video. If we get to, oh, let's just say a 1,000 likes here, We'll do a seven-round mock draft for you, maybe during our live show on Thursday. Who knows? If you want that, that mock draft, though, do me a favor and like this video. One of the names I'm really intrigued by as a trade-down candidate, Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa, the linebacker from Notre Dame. Gifted athlete. Now, is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? That's a fantastic question. He was what, what I call the, the rover overhang-style defender, the majority of his snaps this past year actually came in the slot as a nickel corner for Notre Dame. He's playing that safety linebacker, kind of that Isaiah Simmons role from Clemson, if, if that makes sense. But 
He's able to make plays against the run. 11 tackles for loss. He covered pretty damn well on top of that. 62% on 34 targets. Broke up four, three passes plus the interception. He's an incredible athlete. He fits the modern-day NFL. I don't know if he ends up being a strong safety for this team. If so, kind of want to keep Donovan Wilson in that role. Can he play the weak side linebacker role? Maybe he'd be one of the lightest ones in the NFL. His fit will be determined by each individual team in terms of what they want to do with him. But if you trade down, let's say you get to like 16, 17, 18, somewhere in that range. I like taking a Wusu Koromoa in the mid to late teens and trading down a lot more than I do like taking Micah Parsons at number 10 overall. So let me know in the comments section who you guys want the Dallas Cowboys to draft. Any player, any round, maybe it's even a day two player or a day three player that you've fallen in love with. Let me know who you want the Cowboys desperately to take this year in the comments section. Now, Caleb Farley, Patrick Tan talked a lot about them. They're not trade-down targets. J.C. Horn, however, well, he might be. That is Joe Horn's kid, by the way. He didn't play an entire season for South Carolina. He opted out after Will Muschamp got, got fired, but he played pretty well this season. His, his coverage stats are very impressive. He was targeted 24 times and allowed just eight receptions. Now, three of those did go for touchdowns, which is not ideal, but his performance against Auburn Seth Williams, who will be drafted, by the way, they targeted him 10 times. He allowed two catches for 55 yards and picked off two passes in that game alone. Had a couple other pass breakups as well. That was a dominant performance, and it's a big reason why he'll probably end up going in round one. Now, Horn is still raw, but he has upside to be a potential, you know, press man cover corner which are the types of traits that nfl teams covet and if the cowboys want to run some cover three and more cover one well horn fits that mold pretty well you got digs on one side you trade down you grab jace yorn add an extra draft pick to spend it on a defensive tackle or a linebacker or a safety and you're heading in a pretty good direction at that point he is still raw however so i don't think he would be an instant overnight number one corner that's a pretty high task for anyone right Jeffrey Okuda, but he does make sense as a trade down target. Now, today's show made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code you see on screen right there. Cowboys125. It gets you a 125% deposit bonus. Now, you get that bonus when you put down at least 100 bucks. On top of that, if you email us, Cowboys at chatsports.com. That's cowboys at chatsports.com. We'll hook you guys up with a Dak Prescott jersey. If you have questions or if you, you want to get started or you've already signed up and deposited, just email us. We'll help you guys out. And I'll make sure that email, by the way, gets put in both the comments and in the description. Go check it out. It's cowboys at chatsports.com if you guys have questions. But don't forget to use that promo code cowboys125 when you sign up and deposit. Let's talk another kind of linebacker, uh, Zayvon Collins. Jeremiah Wusukormo and Collins are very different styles of prospects, and they also have some similar concerns in terms of fit. Collins is not a prototypical fit at linebacker. He was great this year for Tulsa. Don't get me wrong. He's got a unique body structure. He's like 6'4", 260, which is almost an edge rusher, but that's not what he did at Tulsa. And I almost want to call him and Wusukormo a defensive athlete. This stat line in eight games is pretty bonkers, even if it is against lesser competition. 7.5 tackles for loss. There is a very thin group of players out there who average half a sack and half an interception per game. That's what Collins did. Four sacks, four interceptions in eight games this year. I think he fits as a, you're going to want him to blitz, but he can cover a little bit as well. I don't know how well that fits in the Dan Quinn style defense, but if you trade down into the late round one category, I do think that starts to make some sense for the Cowboys. I'd rather have a Wusu Koromoa, but if you want a linebacker that can cover a little bit and blitz, Collins does make some sense. Now let me know in the comment section who your guys' favorite draft prospect is this season. Doesn't have to be a round one guy, but your favorite prospect, maybe it's a player who went to your favorite college. I wouldn't be surprised about that one, but let me know in the comments section. Now, Collins is not a pure edge rusher, but I did want to mention some other guys who fit that mold. Quiddy Pay out of Michigan, Gregory Russo from Miami, Azizo Zolari from Georgia, Joseph Asai from Texas. 
I'm sure people have decided their favorite prospect because it's the Cowboys report after all, Texas. Jason Oway from Penn State. All of these guys are not worth taking at number 10 overall. If you trade down, they start to make a little bit more sense, but they, they got flaws with all of them. I don't love the top end of this year's edge rusher class, but the depth in that kind of late round one, round two, even in a round three range, some pretty solid prospects there. So trade down, I'm, in, I'm happy to have that discussion on those guys, just not at number 10 overall. Now with the Cowboys having a top 10 pick, guess what? Lots of draft coverage coming for to you guys here on the Cowboys Report. So if you want to stay up to date on all the players the Cowboys are linked to or, or they meet with or whatever, if you want to stay up to date on all things Cowboys, hit that big red button and subscribe today. I did want to mention offensive line here as well in terms of a possible trade down. This all depends on what happens with Tyron Smith, right? If you feel confident, if you bring him back and say, you know what, we're good, we, we have immense confidence in and Tyron Smith being the same guy and being good to go next season, then you're probably not going to have much consideration there. If you're concerned, trading down does make some sense. So five names I want to mention, not including Christian Darisar or Sean Slater. Those guys are maybe to stick at 10 if you want them. Elijah Vera Tucker from USC has played left tackle and left guard. That fits the Cowboys pretty well. Alex Leatherwood from Alabama. I don't want him at 10. You move down and, and you still need a, a tackle. Okay, we can have that discussion. Tevin Jenkins, by the way, from Oklahoma State, kind of a, a bit of a, a riser as this process goes along. Samuel Cosby from Texas, reminds me a lot of Connor Williams, who I liked a lot coming out, a bit too much, and I know how some of you guys feel about him. And then Liam Eichenberg from Notre Dame, all guys that could play left tackle for you pretty early. Now, as a reminder, if you guys have any draft questions whatsoever, or so many of you do, you want me to give feedback on your seven-round mock drafts that you do, hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowning.